Oh my god! For once, I didn't have to come in by boom tube. But this thing was talking away here, so you probably guessed that. Be quiet. Okay. Uh, how's it going, folks? Uh, once again, from a secret, undisclosed location. I guess the secret is undisclosed, isn't it? Okay. From a secret location in historic downtown St. John's on a Friday night here as we await a huge storm coming our way comes in the Library of Graphic Literature with your host, me, Wallace Rowan. And we got a few things uh, <coughs> to have a look at here today as you can tell. One big thing and a couple of little things. Um, I'm super excited, super stoked to get to opening this because as you can see it's still uh, closed and uh, I got a few other books to have a quick look at too but we got to break open the Infinity Gauntlet box set, slipcase, everything. Okay, let's take uh, the, other, uh, the other ones off, off it. Unfortunately, uh, <coughs> I have no help here with me this evening, just myself. So let's start by slicing it carefully, of course. To make sure that we don't harm the valuable books inside. Da, 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 da. Okay. Oh, you're Okay. Now, people, let's just have a. Oh, oh. A poster or a. Uh, what is it? I think it even said here something about a exclusive poster within. Okay, I guess it's one of these uh, fabric type of posters. Either that or it's a huge hanky uh, with the uh, cover of uh, First Infinity Gauntlet on it. Okay, people, let's break it out here. Okay, okay, this is going to be uh, a bit tricky. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to move my tea out of the way here because I don't want to spill it and get anything. So, uh, here we go, folks. God, I think we're going to have to tip this one upside down then. to get this out. <laughs> one of the more difficult unboxings, as you can see. Okay. To hell with you. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Man, they really did a... Uh, Packed this thing in uh, pretty good, didn't they? Oh, okay. Slowly peel it apart. And let it down gently. So we don't, so we don't injure it in any way possible. Oh. Oh. Okay. Whew. That was something. So here we are. Oh. The Infinity Gauntlet. Oh. Take a look at this. Oh. Pretty cool, huh? Oh. I care if it's... You can have a look at the other side here. Hang on a sec. What do you think about that? Now, I know it doesn't look that big camera here, but this is huge. Uh, well, it weighs a lot anyway. Oh. Anyway, so. The Infinity Gauntlet. Let's open it up here. Hoo 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 hoo. And we have this super cool uh, piece of uh, Georgia Perez art there. And here we have the Infinity Gauntlet set. It's basically 12 books carry, covering from uh, the first Infinity Gauntlet series and actually even a little bit before with the Silver Surfer stuff. All the Jim Sterling stuff up through Infinity War, Infinity Crusade and then Warlock and the Infinity Watch and, and it has a lot of the crossovers thrown into it which I'm not that interested in but the, the actual books themselves some of these I am very interested in. Check out the prologue. 
have a look there folks and what that one is that one basically is the silver surfer stuff oh and then strangely enough <laughs> the infinity gauntlet itself is actually one of the thinner books in the entire set uh, then we have the infinity crossovers the gauntlet aftermath and then we have the infinity war check it out there very nice I love this set it's uh well I love these uh, sort of book sets anyway uh, they're just so cool let's turn this over there now to see if we can oh, excuse me excuse me there we go oh. no so yeah you can see like I say the artwork there I can't really push it over I guess far enough to get it into a camera view but actually so I think I will actually lift it just to so that you can get a look at the uh, the flat there see whoa, whoa come on there we go pretty cool hey eh? so whew, back to the books here again okay so we got gauntlet war uh, war crossovers volume 2 not interested in that the crusade crusade crossovers gauntlet companion so here it is holding a nice beautiful little set here holding one of the more classic runs in uh, the Marvel Pantheon um, can't say enough about Infinity Gauntlet and the entire attendant features to it uh, the first series Infinity Gauntlet actually is a classic great great series um, it has uh, it has great art for, uh, starting out with uh, George Perez, but who gives up after, I do believe, issue three, I think it is. And Ron Lim takes over. Lim had worked with him on the uh, the Thanos quest, which I'll also include in this. Uh, sort of just the precursor as Thanos is gathering up the the uh, Infinity Gems. I hate it when they call them Infinity Stones. Or they're Infinity Gems. And uh, that's a great story. And, of course, the in the Infinity Gauntlet, because, I mean... Warlock is dead and all that, but they bring him back. Uh, spoiler for anyone who hasn't read this. Um, along with uh, Gamora and Pip and all that, and in the end, uh, he's triumphant. And then there's the Infinity War, which I do believe is all the heroes trying to get the gauntlet away from uh, from Adam Warlock. And it's been so long since I read the Crusade. I know it was, uh, God, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was taken on like one of the good aspects of Adam or something like that. Anyway, good stuff too. I, I, I can remember reading a bit of the Crusade and it started out pretty good, but it it waned shortly after and gone. But now when, of course, when this box set came out, I mean, I have the Infinity Gauntlet uh, Omnibus and I do have the Marvel Premier Classic edition of, of it and all that. But I mean, this had the war and there so much else I figured uh, it's just as well to go for it. So here it is in all its glory. Pretty darn cool, eh? Right? Oh, let's go in for another close look again there, folks. Oh, oh. Infinity Gauntlet. There's the sides. And, oh. and there's the back. Oh. And here's the top. Okay, with that being said, let's oh, oh. get this all, all this leftover stuff from it. Oh. Let's lay the Infinity Gauntlet to the side there for now. Whew. of the classic cover of Infinity Gauntlet number one. I love this cover actually. So that's pretty cool. Let me go over here, okay. So, let's 
casserole. Okay. Oh. Whew. That was a lot of heavy lifting. <laughs> anyway, let's get down to some of the other stuff here for on today's schedule. Um, actually, a few of them too are wrapped, so we get to unwrap these together. Starting with, and this is uh, some artwork I haven't seen yet. It is uh, the Tales of Batman, Volume Two, from Gene Cole. Oh, let me get this down there. Let's see. Here. So, this uh, uh, I have the first first volume too, and of course I'm a huge Gene Colan fan. Who isn't? And I actually kind of liked to when I read the first series. It, it was just like, wow, actually, uh, Colan was a uh, in some ways a perfect fit for Batman. Uh, I don't know if it's his uh, experience at having done Dracula and sort of the the uh, very gothic feel he can bring to something sometimes, but uh, but overall, you know, not a bad thing. I can tell. I can't speak as to the stories now because I haven't actually read uh, any of these. But as for Gene the Dean Colin, always did top notch. Top notch, top notch artwork in my my book. So for you Gene Cohn fans out there, you gotta pick this up to add this to the collection. Way to go, Gene. Uh, next, next, next. Oh, oh yes, Daredevil. This is uh, <coughs> volume two of the Daredevil Omnibus series, collecting the Wade and Mark Wade and Chris Samney run. A great, great run on Daredevil. Uh, in my mind, the the Wade uh, and Samney books really almost come up to the level of uh, of Miller himself, and in some ways does surpass him. But it's uh, especially Samney himself. He once again, uh, you all out there know how much I love uh, Alex Toth and folks like that. So I mean, he also has that very simplistic style to him. Simple layouts, bold. I just love the simplicity of his stuff. Like I say, very, very Tothian. Alex Toth would be proud. This whole series, like I say, excellent from from uh, from top to bottom. Um, I've read the. As a matter of fact, I was reading it when it was coming out too. Um, as I got back into comics. And uh, I thought it was a top-notch series. So any of you uh, Daredevil fans out there who are not sure about this, buy, 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 buy it. Okay, what next? Ooh, 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 ooh. This actually is a uh, probably one of the most uh, underrated uh, books I've come across in years. Uh, this is from Archea, and it's The March of the Crabs, Volume the Three. Uh, I've read the other two volumes, and it's kind of hard to explain. It's a story about crabs and their life in uh, just off a little town, uh, and uh, what is it, the Giron Estuary, uh, <coughs> written by Arthur de Pin. Um, it's it's absolutely it's it's incredible. Uh, I can't recommend any graphic novel more that I've read it over the past few years. See, I even kissed this one. I feel so, so in love with it. Um, but yeah, this one, once again, uh, has a really cool art style. I love the way they draw the crabs in this very square-like effect. And they have them sort of squarish. Uh, the first one, two ones we're talking about is a, uh, a species of crab that w could only go forward. Or, and uh, what was it? I couldn't go side to side or whatever, but anyway, they eventually evolved, and then next thing, all hell broke loose. But, um, and I do believe the first two volumes are still in print as far as I know, so if you can, follow the March of the Crabs. Great, great graphic novel. I think this one actually would be super cool as a cartoon, so any of you people out there in Hollywood land, take my advice. And last, and without doubt, not the least, of this week's 
grand prizes of comics. Da -da -da -da. Yes, Commandy, the last boy on, boy on Earth, by the king of comics, Jack Kirby. And this is, once again, is another one of my favorites of, uh, favorite series of Jack. Now, I do have, and you probably even see it right behind me, I do have the, what I call the black tie editions of the Kirby Omnibus, but that was a two volume affair. Uh, this little baby is the entire series in one big volume. Check it out. Now let's, let's see what the, uh, it looks like without its, without its cover. First of all, let's have a look at the cover. Oh, I like the, I like the fact that that sort of reminds me of the, uh, and it is very much designed after the, uh, Fourth World Omnibus. Very nicely done. And here, of course, Commandy by Jack Kirby Omnibus. What a beauty, eh? Kirby, um, Commandy uh, uh, followed, followed shortly after the, the Fourth World and all that, and, uh, and, and around the same time as the Demon. And uh, it was actually one of the first Kirby comics, I actually, I think I started collecting along with Captain, uh, no, Captain America would have been later. Um, no, I think it was this, even before Captain America, no, because he hadn't gone back to Marvel at that point, that's right. Um, but this, I, I was actually starting to collect these while it was still, when they were out, and I really started to fall in love with them. Now, of course, you get some people who are saying, oh, you know, it's a ripoff of Planet of the Apes. It's just like, well, not really, because Kirby did the talking animal thing uh, years before in, in other comic book stories I've seen him do, actually even before uh, the novel of uh, <coughs> Planet of the Apes came out. So, um, and not only that, this is more than just the apes are, are the dominant species, it's everything. So that's a cool thing, so beyond just being man versus ape, this is man versus nature. So man versus ant, plant, plant, animal, everything, lions, tigers, uh, Crickets, cats, dogs, and some great characters in this. Dr. Canis, the dog-faced uh, scientist, Ben Boxer, and the uh, the other guys who were uh, who were basically like human cyclotrons. Uh, so they had superpowers, and they sort of protected a uh, commandy too. There he is. Some jaguars there, and oh yeah, I love this. The Devil and Mr. Sacker. I mean, wildly, wildly imaginative books. That's that's what caught my eye with Commandy when I started reading them. It was just like, my God, this is... It was unlike anything I'd read at the time. It just opened my eyes and... It was like, my God, this guy... This guy Kirby actually is really good. Because this is the, around the time that I did really start to really understand Kirby. A lot of people, when they first start reading comics, they... They may see Kirby and say, oh, God, I hate his style, you know, very blocky, blah, blah, blah. But that's people who truly don't understand what Kirby is all about. Kirby is, is the consummate storyteller. He's chock-a-block with the action. And it just never, never ends. Every panel is a study in, in cinematic storytelling. I, this one I can really remember, the uh, Commandy Giant, because this was cool, because at the time it had the origin story in it which at the time I hadn't read, so so that was kind of cool. And then, uh, some more. And eventually, uh, towards the end, the last few I do believe, uh, I think were written by, or at least edited by other people. Uh, let's see this, yeah, Jerry Conway, uh, Jack Kirby, and they're, you know, they're, they're okay, but still not, it's not Kirby. The, you know, Jerry Conway and the boys, you know, great writers and all that, but, you know, <coughs> this is Commandy, the last boy on Earth, Earth we're talking about. <laughs> um, so, yeah, absolutely incredible series, uh, inked for the most part by uh, Mike Royer, and, and I do believe D. Bruce Berry also did a few, yeah, D. Bruce Berry did do a few, but Royer did the first, oh, God, he did first pile up to about 17 and then Barry took took over and I do believe he did most of them then right on through yep looks like here to the end uh, with a couple of oh and then uh, 
warrior ended up uh, finishing up there. But anyway, um, absolutely wild, wild uh, series. You just never know where it's going from, from one page to the next, and um, and I'm I'm surprised, you know, that that uh, DC or or anyone haven't even thought to ever make a movie about Commandy. I think I think it'd be excellent, but they would have to keep the they'd have to stay as true to the story as possible because that's the brilliance of Commandy, the Last Boy on Earth is 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 as it is right now. Uh, to me, if, if they started to change it and tried to Hollywoodize it or whatever, they'd lose it all together. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, you never know. So this is, whew, and it's a nice little way too. So this is another little beauty. Uh, I told the boy that the Omnibuds Cafe out, I'd showed in, uh, and I have, so that's for you guys. So run out, run, 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 or as the king once said, don't ask, just buy it. Doom, 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 That being said, um, I guess there really isn't that much more. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's all the books that I have. Uh, I figured the, uh, I didn't want to go hollering out all the uh, Infinity Gauntlet books and unwrapping them because this thing would have gone into a half an hour or more. And, uh, and I've had a long day. <laughs> um, so... Not bad, get out there, buy that Infinity Gauntlet uh, book set, and definitely pick up that Commandy. And uh, and the March of the Crabs. Well, any, anything I, I recommend here. Like I said before, if I recommend it, I bought it because uh, I like it and it's, it's of some quality. <laughs> that being said, uh, I'm going to shut it down here for tonight. Going to hunker down. Like I said, there's a huge storm rolling in from North America coming in towards us here now gonna roll right up over us dump a load of snow but you know what that means that means I get to stay in bed tomorrow wrap myself in blankets and read comics 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 and even more comics so that being said I shall summon me a boom tube and I'll be out of here so uh, until then I'll be reading in the library. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Well, how about a uh, boom tube? <gasps> oh my god, there it is. Okay, folks, thanks for having me over. Bye! <laughs>